Well, Tony Fauci is now a figure of religious veneration to the kind of Americans who think Starbucks makes good coffee. So it makes sense, as a god striding the earth, that Tony Fauci has his very own hagiographic film. And he does. It features interviews with Bono, Susan Rice, Bill Gates, and some of the rest of the worst people in the world. But the best part of the documentary, needless to say, comes from Tony Fauci himself, who is, not surprisingly, the world's greatest fan of Tony Fauci. Here, for example, is Tony Fauci explaining why so many Americans don't trust him. I mean, I'm the bad guy to an entire subset of people because I represent something that is uncomfortable for them. It's called the truth. <laughs> they can't handle the truth! Those Americans! Keep in mind, some people may distrust Tony Fauci for other reasons, like he's a liar and he's admitted it. He lied about scientific data, for example, about herd immunity, and he's admitted it. But in the documentary, Tony Fauci's taken the long view and he's begging historians to forget all of that. I hope that if historians look back, if they ever would want to look back <laughs> at what I've done and my life, maybe somebody says, hey, that guy was pretty good. Uh-huh. So there's a vaccinated man wearing a mask alone outside. That's clearly a sign of mental illness, but the film makes it seem like heroism. What do we make of this? Jesse Waters is the host of Waters World and the author of the fantastic book, How I Saved the World, which he basically did. He joins us to assess the Tony Fauci movie. Jesse Waters, have you seen this? No, and I don't plan on it, but he really is the perfect Hollywood actress. Craves attention, <laughs> loves drama. And if you criticize his performance, oh, they only hate me because I'm beautiful. <laughs> this is the thing. We don't hate the truth. We just want Tony to tell it. And we, yeah. we trust the science. We just don't trust that scientist because, Tucker, this is the same guy that funded the risky research in yeah. that sloppy lab that sprung this pandemic. And then he kept us all locked inside to protect us from a virus that mostly spreads inside. So instead of resigning and doing the right thing, he goes on television and actually suggests that future historians document his life and treat him as a hero. Now, as someone with a healthy ego, Tucker, even I blush at something like that, but maybe this is just satire from Disney. I mean, they do use Susan Rice as a character witness for Anthony Fauci, the Benghazi bag lady, or maybe this is just Disney paying Fauci back because Disney shares did go up 100% during the Fauci lockdowns. Remember, everybody just sat home and watched Disney Plus, and they got all those Beijing profits coming in because Tony ran interference for the lab leak. So maybe it's just payback. But what about the filmmakers? I mean, if you're interviewing the guy who helped create COVID-19, lied about it, got caught, funded these Frankenstein experiments that wrecked the United States, wouldn't you feel obligated to ask him about it? It's too late because now the media has anointed him. Remember, he's Lord Lockdown, arch enemy of Donald Trump, savior of everything scientific and holy. The media were early investors in the Fauci narrative. Remember, they rode the Fauci wave from the lockdowns to the ballots all the way to power in the White House. Same with big tech and big pharma. They're in on this, too. He's too big to fail. They can't pump and dump and sell him like they did Cuomo. They can't burst the Fauci right, bubble. Right. There's That's too right. much money locked in. The guy's uncancelable, um, even though he's about yay big. That is such a smart... They can't pump and dump like they did Cuomo. I wish I'd thought of that. Man, is that perfect. Jesse Waters, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.